It's springtime here in the Northern Hemisphere, and it feels appropriate to share this bright and sunny color with you. Never mind that this footage is from several weeks ago. Hi, I'm Irene, and as you watch this demonstration, I'm going to talk about a little of this and a little of that. Normally, you wouldn't get much chatter out of me, you know, in a face-to-face -face conversation. But I've got this YouTube channel and may as well indulge in some self-therapy. Look, I'm somewhat introverted with antisocial tendencies, but one thing I don't shy away from is old content. Nope, I grab that stuff with both hands, give it a good shake to agitate the particulates, then record a spanking new voiceover to give it that fresh-from-the-studio luster. I'm kinda into fountain pens and inks, but so is my partner, producer Mike. This was a recent purchase for himself, but I wanted to play show-and-tell. The items are a Lamy Safari fountain pen with a bottle of Lamy ink, both in the color mango. I do love me some tropical fruits. Mangoes, as I understand it, first came from India. But while mangoes are definitely delicious, my favorite tropical fruit is pineapple. From upside-down cake to teriyaki burgers, its tangy sweetness works with both desserts and savory dishes. Sure, you could say that about other fruits, too. Take apples, for instance. They make great pies, but they also pair well with cheeses, pork chops, and green salads. But here's the thing. When it comes down to it, I wouldn't choose to put apples on my pizza. That's right. I'm one of those pineapple pizza people. Go ahead and let those golden chunks cohabitate with ham, cheese, and sauce, creating a sweet and salty paradise. Because I'm not a pizza pansy. I mean, come on. Even the late great comedian Mitch Hedberg couldn't wait to get to the pineapple lifesavers. And that is why pineapple is the superior fruit. Okay, I am not a fan of this bottle. While I appreciate what they were going for with the little nub on the bottom of the glass part, the attached plastic part holding the roll of blotting paper feels clumsy and impractical. But perhaps I'm being too harsh. I guess since I don't take my inks out of the studio, it's just easier for me to use a tissue or one of the many paint-stained blue shop towels that are lying around. It doesn't help that it's a struggle for me to separate the two pieces or that the paper end always wants to roll back inside, which means I would need to separate the two pieces to refeed it. End of the world stuff? No. Annoying design? Yes. While I may be shameless when it comes to pizza toppings, that doesn't mean I'm unfamiliar with food faux pas. Like that time I got overly excited at the Indian restaurant, and I dug into the plate of lamb korma before remembering, oh, hey, this is supposed to be family style. Huh, no wonder the spoon is so big. Yeah, that happened, and it was super cringe. Like I said, this mango-colored pen belongs to producer Mike, but my safari is a vermilion -y red. Yeah, there are lots of colors to choose from, and I can understand why people like to collect these. Sometimes I imagine switching the caps and being proud of myself for non-conforming. Because just like Pee Wee Herman, underneath it all, I'm a rebel. So I've previously mentioned that I sometimes watch those movie reaction videos. That's kind of weird, right? Getting your jollies from watching someone else watch a movie. 
But it must be popular because there are so many reaction channels. So the gears on my avaricious side started turning. Wouldn't it be nice to tap into that viewership? I mean, the affiliate kickbacks alone would be sweet. Sure, art supplies can get pricey, but have you seen what they want for a couple of home theater chairs? You don't know financial hurt until you try to purchase a row of leather recliners with built-in cup holder and massage features. No, I haven't done that. I'm just speculating here. As they say, there's no harm in looking. Uh, what was I talking about? Oh, movie reaction videos. The point is, that's not going to happen here. And there are a couple of reasons for that. One, I like what I'm doing, which is arting and inking. Two, I respect and appreciate the people who've been watching this channel for that content. And three, I've seen too many movies. Regardless of the veracity of others, I'm not a good enough actor to pretend I haven't already seen the movie four times. Hmm, I don't know where this story is headed. Wait, what? He's been dead the whole time? No way! See, not convincing at all. That's because in high school, I thought creative writing would be way cooler than drama class. <sighs> yeah, no, it doesn't take much to entertain me. Usually I'm alone in a darkened studio editing video files or speaking into a microphone. So when the opportunity arrived to celebrate my advancing years with Costco pizza and cake, I was all in. It was a little early, but that's because my good friend Gail and I decided to celebrate both our birthdays together. Hers is in April and mine is in May. So we had a little chat and snarf session the other day on my deck. The past week has been sunny and warm here in the PNW. It finally feels like a proper springtime. Not many things are as satisfying as sweeping away desiccated leaves, twigs, and other mystery bits. Then wrestling with the patio umbrella, only to deposit its hidden debris onto the freshly swept deck. But back to the pizza. No, it didn't have pineapple. Uh, that's because Costco offers only pepperoni or cheese. And that's fine, because I'm a fan of their pepperoni pizza. Still, it would be nice if they offered more choices. I really couldn't name the best pizza I've ever had. Although, back in the day, well, the 1980s anyway, Godfather's Combo Pizza was my favorite. I also like their taco pizza, but the Godfather's locations around here disappeared a long time ago. The best I've had in more recent years is probably the mushroom pizza from Serious Pie in Seattle. Their sweet fennel sausage is also really good. So, my impressions of these items. I do like Lonnie's Safari Pen. This is the second one I've used, and it just strikes me as a reliable, consistently good writer. I mean, the only drawback I can think of is the fact that it doesn't come with a converter. So if you want to use a converter with this pen, you would need to purchase it separately. As for the ink, Okay, the color initially worried me, but I ended up liking it. It's colorful and bright. It's eye-catching. And most importantly for me, it's completely legible. There's a diamine ink I've been coveting, and it's called Tobacco Sunburst. It's like a burnt yellowy brown, like an old used-up cigarette filter. And this mango from Lamy could be its younger, less jaded sister. 
Now comes the hard part, giving these items back to producer Mike. I mean, just look at all of the lovely shading on that page. I'm happy to share this fresh and fruity pen and ink experience. Now I've got a craving to slice some mangoes and spread it on pizza. Until next time, to all the fruit on pizza haters, remember, tomatoes are technically fruits. So bite on that and stay inky, my friends. <laughs>